Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain, and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven-day-a-week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 289 of our trek, and yesterday we hiked the ninth trail of our trek, which was called the Trail of Consecration. Today we will hike the Trail of Self. There is a total of 18 trails on this trek, which we are calling the Principles of Spiritual Growth. This is adapted from a short book written by Miles J. Stanford. These practical lessons were instrumental in my spiritual growth as a young man as I was seeking to create and live my legacy. As we continue on each of these trail of our overall trek, I trust that you will find this information valuable in your own life, regardless of where you happen to be on your faith trek. Each of the trails that we hike will build on the previous one, so if you do miss any of the days of our Wisdom Trek, please go to wisdom-trek.com to listen to them and to read the Daily Journal. We are recording our podcast from our studios at Home 2 in Charlotte, North Carolina. We were able to take a break Sunday afternoon for a good four-mile walk as the weather was sunny and pleasant. Paul and I always enjoy our times of walking as it spurs great conversations covering many aspects of our lives. And one of those aspects is that we do travel a good bit between Marietta and Charlotte. Unless our plans change, we are heading back to the big house on Friday evening for a little over two weeks there. We do hope to get up there while the daffodils are still in bloom, as we have missed seeing them bloom for the past couple of years. These daffodils come from the ones that were planted around the property by my granny, so they are very special to us and we like to see them when they're in bloom. But now it's time to head out for our hike for today on the Trail of Self. This is a difficult trail because although we like to think of ourselves as being selfless, the contrary is usually true. Most of our thoughts that we have and the decisions that we make are centered on how we are going to benefit from them. Very few people, if any, are truly selfless in the decisions that they make. On our hike today, let us learn how to change our thinking about self when it comes to our relationship with God. This is the tenth of 18 trails, which makes up the trek that we are calling the Principles of Spiritual Growth. One of the most important factors for a Christian's growth is the Holy Spirit's revelation of a self-life in a believer. Self is that fleshly, carnal life of nature, the life of the first Adam, which is described in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. Even the Apostle Paul in the height of his ministry understood how difficult it is for us not to be a selfish person when he wrote Romans chapter 7, verse 18. And I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Nowhere do spiritual principles mean more than here. Plato, when he wrote, Know Thyself, was more right than he actually knew, but he was still only half right. Paul, when he wrote Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, which says, It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, was 100% right. In order for you to get beyond just knowing the Lord Jesus and enter into a consistent and growing personal knowledge of and fellowship with Him, you must come first to know yourself better. This is more than just introspection. It is the Holy Spirit guiding and teaching us through God's Word and trusted mentors. Here are a few items that we must learn first to grow from being self-centered to Christ-centered. First, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Another first is John chapter 12, verse 24. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. And another first is Romans chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. Since we have been united with him in death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. So we must continually be learning about ourselves. Self-revelation precedes divine revelation. This is a principle for both spiritual birth and spiritual growth. As a believer, if you are going through struggle and failure, it is very possible that you are being carefully and lovingly handled by the Lord in a very personal way. You are being taken through experiences, which sometimes last for years, of self-revelation and into death of your self-ways so that you can be shaped into the image of God. As the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 and 11, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised Him from the dead. I want to suffer with Him, sharing in His death so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. God sometimes works in our lives by paradox. Success comes through failure, victory comes through defeat, and yes, even life springs out of death. That is death to ourselves. The only element in the believer's life that crumbles away is that which has to go anyway. 
The new life can never be harmed or affected by God's working in us. Self will never cast out self. Think of the analogy of the potter's will. You start as a lump of clay, and the master potter removes all the self parts which are not part of the finished vessel. Another analogy to think of is the master goldsmith. By intense heat, the gold is refined by removing all the dross that is not pure gold. Through God's Spirit and His Word, He is the master potter and the goldsmith working in our lives. So often the means utilized by the Spirit is adversity because most of the time we will not come to our sense of need until we feel the potter's sculpting tools or the refiner's fire. And we like to quote the verses in Romans chapter 8 verses 28 and 29 as if God was going to work everything out for what we think is good. But let's look at these verses again. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. For God knew His people in advance. He chose them to become like His Son, so that His Son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. We see in these verses God is working everything out for our good according to His purpose for us, and His purpose for us is to make us become like His Son. So I want to ask you, does that give these verses a bit of a different perspective for you? In order to become like His Son, we must have purged from our lives everything that is not in the image of God. That is so difficult for all of us. Fortunately, though, it is not up to us to make the changes, but Christ living in us that will make those changes. What is impossible self is possible with God. Someone has rightly said, there are many separated from the world Christians who are not separated from themselves Christians. On our track of the principles of spiritual growth, today we explored the truths about self that we have found on the trail of self. Through God's Holy Spirit and His Word, we can trim away self to be an appropriate vessel that God is destined for us to be. We are created in God's image, and through this process, His image will shine through who you really are. We have to understand, though, this is a gradual process as we grow and mature in our faith. Tomorrow we will begin a new hike on the trail of self-denial, where we will come to understand that humility is not thinking less of yourselves, but thinking of yourself less. Every trail that we hike on this trek will help us to create and live our legacy each day. So encourage your family and friends to join us, and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek creating a legacy that will finish our podcast for today just as you enjoy these daily doses of wisdom yourself we ask you to help us to grow wisdom trek by sharing with your family and friends through email facebook twitter or in person when you meet with them and invite them to come along with us each day the journal for today's trek can be found at wisdom-trek.com thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide your mentor but most importantly i am your friend as i serve you through the wisdom trek podcast and journal each day As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.